must realize that Shakespeare's characters juxtapose themselves. Stereotypes such as the bumbling jester become the witty fool. The damsel in distress always has a trick up her sleeve. And the old king becomes the foolish wit. Now, as great as this is, there's always a stock character in the sidelines. Contemporary literature and media articles also have their share of such personalities, but it's not too difficult to spot the considerably new stereotypes. You've probably heard of them. The arrogant blonde, the smart aleck Asian who is a black belt in karate, the nurturing woman, and the feisty Latina, among others. And let's be honest, these characters aren't just flat. They're also harmful to communities that are probably introduced to unknowing audience as the norms of society. This doesn't just apply to ethnic groups, but also to characters who have a certain trait. Say, how many books and movies have you seen where the studious character has a questionable taste in clothes and where the sports player is extremely attractive but somewhat intellectually behind? Now, if you were following my previous comment, you probably viewed the smart and a pro at martial arts as a positive stereotype. And some might point out that it's nothing to complain about. But then again, because some groups are perceived to have a certain trait, they end up having distorted views on who they are as people. A sociologist professor points out that people who don't live up to their positive stereotypes often end up feeling like failures choking under the weight of pressures and expectations. Not all women can be expected to be good at nurturing. Not all Asians are good at mental math, and not all Canadians are exceptionally polite, among others. When the media focuses on a particular group, it's like they follow a certain rubric of who gets to be shown as how, so those who don't fit within the criteria often end up feeling alienated, not good enough, and unable to fit into their community. Perhaps the way to solve the problem behind positive stereotypes depends on the people passing on the comments. Perhaps it's time for them to realize that humans aren't pre-programmed toys, but rather living, breathing beings who are just as unique as themselves. Now, what about negative stereotypes? A common trope that has seriously impacted people today is that of the over-emotional woman. I'm sure you've heard of that. Now, it may or may not be true that women are likely to have more intense emotions than men, but I'm not joking when I say that both men and women believe that this isn't a love of women to govern a region properly or take on any leadership role seriously. This is wildly due to media coverage, where one example was of a female politician's tears that seemed to have garnered more attention than her male counterparts. Why is that? Well, Forbes clearly states that among the top 10 leadership qualities, seven are honesty, the ability to delegate, communication, sense of humor, confidence, commitment, and the ability to inspire all of this actually require a great deal of emotion to put forward to the populace. So in a way, strong emotions are more likely to be an asset than a disadvantage. Don't get me wrong, this cannot be said of all negative stereotypes, which, like their positive counterparts, are equally likely to demotivate people from taking on certain roles in society and are more likely to give other people biased opinions when it comes to selection procedures, say, for example, a job application. So how exactly can we tackle the issue of positive and negative stereotypes in literature and the media? For starters, authors and producers should view potential characters and individuals as their own being over than, say, part of a Venn diagram of communities and traits. 
There shouldn't be a need to say, oh, I have a person of color in my work. I'll search up what they're like. Rather, they should involve themselves in the community to get a feel of who they are representing as a diverse society over an embodiment of a stereotype. So while this is all said and done, I can say that stereotypes are superficial. I get that, and I hope you do too, but just believing this, it isn't enough to combat the plague of the stiff labeling, which was probably a norm in the past. But this is no longer the past. We don't have to create new labels for people. Or rather, we should not, because stereotypes leave no room for individuality. Henry Ford once said, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Addressing the stereotype by speaking up and reacting clearly is also beneficial as it helps reaffirm that people are less likely to let one's close-minded opinion slide. And with the advent of social media, which can be a brilliant platform for this, people can come together to break these so-called societal norms through the use of hashtags, such as hashtag breaking stereotypes. So that others from all around the world can come together to realize how unique we really are. But what about people who conform to stereotypes? Say, what if a woman appears to be particularly sensitive? Now, before we all start pointing fingers, we ourselves should realize that doing this doesn't just harm ourselves, but society in general. Because one person's actions does not and never determines the actions and ideologies of another person. I'm not trying to say that stereotypes don't exist. They do, but they're just a small percentage of the bigger picture. Tackling this issue requires us to be more open-minded and aware of the uniqueness of each individual. Now, this isn't an endless sob story. It appears, however, that some groups have managed to combat this issue, one being newer cartoons and programs aimed at children and young adults, like ourselves which is rightfully so, as this is the age group where we are given a chance to be more inclusive in the classroom. Shows such as Project MC Squared, which breaks gender stereotypes, and The Legend of Korra, which has a diverse cast of characters who are not affected by the race or disposition in any way, are just two of the many success stories in modern times. So, in a world where information is available directly at our fingertips and where people are given more chances to be inclusive, I'd say that the future of literature and media isn't so bleak after all. Thank you.